Hey everyone, uh, thanks for joining us. I know we're holding you back from the drinks here at 4.30. Uh, I'm Simon, this is Darren. Uh, we're both product managers uh, for, for BMC. I focus on the digital workplace and Darren focuses on the cognitive and, and the chatbot stuff. So what I'm gonna run you through is some driving forces of why we, we're doing what we're doing. Uh, then I'll walk, through, I'll walk you through some of the digital workplace at a high level. Uh, and then I'm going to pass it over to Darren for the chatbot. And then he's going to walk into a full-on demo of our entire suite around BMC Helix and how digital workplace and chatbot uh, play, play into that. Uh, so here we go. So driving forces. So five driving forces. These constantly are changing, it seems, over the last few years. But the first one being uh, disparity. 50% of our clients have uh, five or more catalogs with, 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 within their organization. Uh, they have multiple portals, they have multiple intranets and all that. It's, it's resulting in pure chaos for, for end customers, not knowing exactly where to go and what, and what to do. Followed by changing workforce. So changing workforce, we are now at 35% of the workforce is our, our, our millennials. Um, they know what they want, they know how, how they want to get it, and they know when they want it, and it's usually right now. And what this is, ha what this is evolving into is 39% of the un unauthorized apps that get into, a, into an organization is, are directly related to millennials. So what we want to do there is make sure the business and IT are working together to figure out how to stock the shelves for, 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 for these employees to, to, so they can get the job done that way. Consumerization of the enterprise. This is kind of front and center with every customer I go into now. Um, say, say two years ago, I would go into and it would just be uh, myself, some teammates, and IT. Almost every conversation I go into now is not only IT, but it involves HR, involves uh, facilities, involves procurement, and so on and so forth. And what they're trying to do is they're just trying to fight for their, their end users and, and try to promote that employee experience as, as, as much as they can. Really bringing that consumerized experience into the four walls of the enterprise. Intelligent automation. Uh, so with intelligent automation, I'm hoping you're all automating. If not, you better get to it. 60% uh, of the organizations out there today have a number of tasks. 30% of those tasks or activities can be automated as of, as of now. And this it doesn't mean robots are taking over the world and automation is taking over the world. But what it, what it is doing, it's going to augment the abilities of your employees to get their job done better and be able to focus on the bigger strategic uh, uh, items that, the, that they need to do. Lastly, complexity. This just constantly grows and grows every, every year. So right now, you've got to vote 277 times the amount of data is being created by uh, devices uh, versus the end user. End users will be at about five terabytes of data with by, by next year per user. So start doing the math on that. And then on top of that, 30 million devices plus are now getting added to the network uh, every day or every week. So why BMC Digital Workplace? Engage employees, better business results. Uh, so you're, uh, I'm assuming most of you are on LinkedIn. You probably see these quotes from JW uh, Marriott uh, and, and Richard Branson basically stating, treat your employees well, treat them as, as their number one. If you do so, they will look after your customers. Customers get a better experience. Customers therefore have a propensity to spend 16% more money uh, with, with that organization. And what, what this results in is a better business outcome. And they say it can get up to 21% more profitability if you have these things humming. You've got your employees going, you've got the customers happy with you, and so on and so forth. So just the key takeaway here is look after your employees, they'll look after your customers, and they'll look after your bottom line. So now a brief overview, and then I'll get into some of the items we've just released and are going to release in, 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 in the upcoming months. So BMC Digital Workplace, Omnichannel Experience, uh, Darren will show you a bit, a bit of this in a bit. Essentially what we've done is we've gone in and created a single pane of glass. And instead of just giving it to you in a web interface, we want to bring this to the, to, uh, the tools that our users are engaging with. So our Omnichannel includes Slack, Teams, uh, Skype. SMS, there's a widget with a chat bot. Is there another one? I think that's about it. But a bunch of these different omni just just just, push, just push, pushing all these uh, access to your portals uh, out into these tools. 
United Service Catalog, how we create the single pane of glass is we reach out, and I'll show you a bit of a Mark architecture slide here in a sec, is uh, we go out to all the different catalogs within your organization and we import those into one comma place. When you get those in the comma place, you're able to go in there, uh, dress them up, make them more consumer-like with images and, and that type of stuff. You can add workflows, complex workflows, approvals, and, and everything to that. And then, you pu and then you publish it. And you publish that to the one spot where we then push that out to the omni-channel to your end users. Followed by Sales Beyond IT, so it's just not IT related services that, are, that, that exist in your catalog. You've got HR requests, facility requests, and all those. So we want to be able to bundle across all the different lines of businesses and bring those into uh, one spot and, and drive efficiencies that way. And then device agnostic. Uh, we have a, a, an actual pro progressive web app we released back in 1902. Um, exact same experience across all your devices. It even, when we, we were actually uh, native mobile at one time, but what that happened was a lot of our customers want to brand the sites and you had to recompile on every release. Uh, you had to go get an Apple, uh, an Apple license to go and certificate and do this. With the progressive web app, it all comes included. You can just push push this thing out with, with a URL, favorite it on your home screen, and you're off to races, and your end users won't even know that it's it's, it's, it's not a, uh, an actual native, native application. So this is just that architecture slide. I just wanted to show you exactly what's happening. So we've got multiple diff, diff, different types of catalog and so forth from Amazon Web Services. Darren showed us your earlier today in the keynote. Facilities, ITSM, Automation Anywhere, HR, all driving into that one common spot and then pushing it out to the channels, be it any type of foreign factor and all those channels I was mentioning earlier. Okay, now I'm going to get into some, some futures and stuff like that we're talking about. So, one thing we just released in 1908 was uh, managed service providers. And what it essentially is, is a shared catalog. So, you can have one catalog with multiple branded front ends. So, you could have there's agencies there, but I like using the cars. So you can have a Porsche front end, a BMW front end, an Audi front end. All those can have, they can either share the exact same service across all of them, or they can have individually assigned services to them. And use the login to, to one common interface and they get routed to the appropriate mar marketplace. Service sub catalogs for uh, for lines of businesses. So you've heard a lot of the lines of businesses today, and I spoke about it a, a, a little bit earlier. I know P P Peter did that in the last one. So what's happening? Most conversations I get into, there's usually there's IT in the room now. There's HR and all these different things, but there's usually a bit of a battle uh, between IT and HR. IT is overwhelmed; they want to distribute some of the workload. So what we've done is we've introduced these sub catalogs. So IT is now able to push some of that workload out uh, to, to, to HR where they can go in and create their own service, leverage existing services, and publish it out on their own and manage more of their own time. The problem is when you're dealing with hundreds of thousands of brands that work makes External users. So this is a, a big request over the last little while. Um, three, three use cases we're focusing on right now is one is education. There's a school district in the States that has 600,000 parents that they want to grant access to. So this is for people like with Yahoo and Hot, Hotmail address, email addresses that aren't part of your organization, can come on, come on, log in, take advantage of those services that they're entitled to see. Another use case, um, cities and governments. Uh, just in the last, yesterday there was a request uh, from a government agency in France for, for, fi for 50 million uh, 50 million licenses to go ahead and do this. Not that it would use 50 million, but it would be a licensing model like an active user license where they could go in and, and buy a portion of that and manage it that way. Uh, and then the last one, healthcare. People uh, sitting, lying in the hospital bed and are able to request their food and stuff uh, from, from, from this type of system. And another use case, I'm from Vancouver. There is, uh, the, the city has a program called Snow Angels. And what Snow Angels is, is it's the ability for, or, the elderly can't always go shovel the driveway, so they go to a site and they request, and then their neighbors and so forth can come and help them out and sh shovel it. So, another pr 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 a pretty cool government use case there. Multiple page builder experience generator. So, uh, lack of a better name, um, this is what we're, we're at right now. And what we're trying to do here is, in 1902, we released a home page uh, configurator. It allows you to do a, lo a lot of cool stuff, but we're going to expand on that. Uh, for, for two reasons. Uh, one is we want, back to the lines of business piece, we want HR to go and own their own experience. Like they can go in there and create their own landing page, brand, put notices, announcements and so forth on this and create it themselves. We're not trying to be a SharePoint portal or anything like that. This will be a, a, 
a configurator within the realms of what a service catalog and our digital work, 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 workplace is, but really provide them a lot of flexibility to, to go and do what they want. The second piece of this, and I'll tell this, uh, I'll move on to the next slide here in a sec, but it's, we want people to start building out different journeys. Uh, so there's a, there's three kind of use cases, or not three use cases, but th three uh, uh, opportunities. One is like an employee onboarding application, which I'll, I'll dive into, I've got another slide here. There's employee exiting, and there's, why not have a Christmas party and have people go and request their cabs and request what, what would they need, but these people will be able to go and leverage existing service, but create their own experience around that and tour it through. And then, so just to build on the employee journey, so a lot of our, our, our stuff today starts the moment the person comes in and enters the organization, and they sit down and the computer shows up and so on and so forth. What we want to do is, the moment that person's hired, maybe minus 14 days of, of their start date, they, they, get, they get a URL to go download, or not even download, to access the application, where they can figure out who their teammates are, they can figure out where the location is, where the desks are, they can go and order their actual, uh, actual laptop, and so forth and customize their experience as they come on. That way when they, they walk into the organization, they can, they, they can hit the ground running. Okay. Can everyone hear? Here. Okay, great. So uh, I'm Darren Gosin, product manager for our cognitive services uh, at BMC. And one of the solutions within our cognitive suite is our Helix chatbot, which works really well with Digital Workplace and Digital Workplace Advanced. So we're going to take a look at that. But first, let's kind of talk about why. I mean, why are we talking about chatbots now? The last couple of years, chatbots have been uh, really hot and virtual assistants as, as, as well. So what are some of the things that are leading to it and what some of the value or outcomes that our customers are getting from it? So the first thing that is leading to chatbots is really mobile. I mean. Mobile devices are very well suited to messaging. In fact, if you're like me, you probably send a text before you make a phone call now. We all have smart devices, and we likely all have multiple messaging applications on our devices. And it's very quickly becoming the method of communication that's preferred, where if people have the choice to call or message, they're gonna do so. And that's no different when we're working within our organization. The second is our usage of personal assistance or virtual assistance within our personal lives. So using Google Home or Alexa or Siri has become commonplace for us now within our personal lives. And typically, these actions or interactions that start within our personal lives start to make their way into the business world after a couple years. We kind of test out these capabilities and validate the usage of these before they come into the enterprises. And it's been a good couple years where people have really started to leverage virtual assistants within their personal lives like Alexa. <clears throat> and then the third is really the advances in AI technology that enables this. There's been a tremendous amount of investment within AI technology, uh, more specifically if we're talking about virtual assistants and chatbots, natural language processing is one of the key, key AI technologies leveraged there. So within the last couple of years, this technology has really advanced so that you can pretty quickly build a data model that's gonna give you a high level of accuracy when leveraging chatbots. Now the result of that is that our customers and organizations are starting to see the benefits of it. So, are using chatbots to deflect, deflect calls that are coming in or emails that are coming in to the service desk, providing it as a self-service means in which users can uh, self-heal their issue or have a chatbot that can heal it for them. So there's automation associated with that chatbot. So of the, of the organizations that are leveraging it, a very high number, you can see 88% are seeing that deflection in, uh, in reduction in their calls, et cetera. As well as one of the key aspects of cognitive services and chatbot being the, the artificial intelligence for experience is really around customer experience. As I mentioned, it's a preferred way in which you communicate, 
and we're using these um, services in our personal lives. So that leads to an increase in employee satisfaction, which leads to an increase in employee production as well. <clears throat> so what is Helix Chatbot? Helix Chatbot is, I like to think of it as a choice. It gives your employees a choice on how you interact with the organization, with the service desk. And it gives you a choice in whether you have to pick up the phone or use the channel in which you prefer. So messaging being a channel, but on top of that, you have multiple factor forms of messaging that you can do. So uh, as mentioned, out of the box, we support things like Slack, which developer community uses uh, very much. Uh, Skype for Business, which is pervasive across organizations, but also the ability to just send a text message and get help automatically. So you get to choose not only the fact that you're going messaging, but also which channel you do it in. <clears throat> And it uses conversational artificial intelligence to, to understand what you're saying, respond back, collect information, provide information, and do things. Uh, so really the objective here and where we work with our customers is to automate those level zero, level one interactions between users and humans. The chatbot we feel can automate a large portion of those interactions by being able to provide information or take the appropriate actions to do it. And actually what we see is within our customers that we work with, there's a small number of use cases that account for a high volume of interaction in this level zero, level one. So identifying those and automating and providing answers through the chatbot is really the objective here. Uh, we have a AI uh, agnostic approach, meaning our chatbot leverages our cognitive services in our Helix platform. Those cognitive services are built to be able to leverage multiple AI uh, platforms. So for our chatbot, we use IBM Watson Assistant. We also, with our other cognitive service, use uh, Google TensorFlow and uh, home developed AI technologies, et cetera. So our platform really gives us flexibility in the AI technology to leverage uh, underlying. So you can see we have future integrations planned with Microsoft Flex, Cortana, as well as building our own AI capabilities that we've already been doing. <clears throat> so when I think of the chatbot or I think about the themes of the chatbot and where we want to go with the chatbot, there's really three key themes and we're going to go over them quickly, but Really, I want to show you the product because it's the easiest way to, s to see what the product does. But the first is around conversational experience. And this is around focusing on users. What is the user's preference? What channels do they want to use? And what are the interactions that are um, key to user adoption and good user experience? So uh, we talked about the channels. Chatbot needs to be very personalized. It needs to understand who you are, what you have, what you want to do and be able to respond appropriately. So it can do that. It has interactive buttons where it makes sense. You may have saw it today. It supports multiple languages, as well as it gives you a soft landing if the chatbot can't resolve your issue. So the ability to transfer to a live person is going to help you resolve your issue. The second theme is here called intelligent service delivery. What this is, is what are the things that a chatbot can do? What, what are the actions? So actions like request services. A chatbot can collect information from me and make a request into our catalog that's going to kick off some automation and do something for me. So the chatbot is not just about questions and answers and providing question, uh, information back, but it's about providing me with or doing things for me. Uh, going and retrieving knowledge, but leveraging cognitive insights to get knowledge I can ask the chatbot things like the status of any requests that I have open, provide me that information, as well as the ability to, within your organization, deploy a stra chatbot strategy across your lines of businesses. So bus lines of businesses like HR and facilities, finance, IT, can deploy specialized chatbots that are trained specifically for, uh, for their domain and line of business, and the chatbots can know about each other. 
and then the third theme is here called fast rollout and adoption. But what this is, is how do we get our customers up and running quickly? How do we get time to value very quick for customers that want to adopt this technology? And it's really around um, providing training capabilities so that you can take the data and information that you have within your organization and quickly train your chatbot. So we're going to go over that one as well today. But it's important though, when you deploy a chatbot, it's not, you don't point a chatbot to a database and walk away and it's going to answer everything. You need to also continue to retrain your chatbot. You, so you need to be able to measure it. So look at reporting, being able to understand how people are interacting with the chatbot, and then help the chatbot along the way. I sometimes say ch raising a chatbot is sometimes similar to raising a child. You wouldn't just send a child to school and assume that they know everything and never ask them about how their day was or what they learned. You would work with your child and continue to uh, help them learn. You'd help them with their homework, etc. So that approach to a chatbot by leveraging things like uh, effectiveness reporting is going to make your chatbot more successful. And of course, a web widget, which is important when you're leveraging channels, but also when you're leveraging, or it's more important when you're leveraging the web UI, is making the chatbot available within your organization in the right places. So when you roll out your chatbot, you can make it available within your IT portal or some other pages where users are going, and you provide then the context of that place to the chatbot, but the users are very easily able to find the chatbot, which is very important as well. <clears throat> so let's take a look at it in action. We're going to look at both digital workplace and the chatbot. <clears throat> Close this. I'm just going to mirror my phone here. Looks like it. Okay. So let's start here with <clears throat> digital workplace. So I'm going to start here on my phone because I want to show you digital workplace on multiple devices. So I'm going to show you some capabilities on my phone and then show you on the web UI. So here you can see we have digital workplace. It's a consumer grade experience for getting access to information, services, getting help that you need within your organization. And uh, some key aspects here. One is that it's, we call it a single pane of glass. So as I go through here, you're going to see that I have services, guest Wi-Fi, employee onboarding, healthcare, et cetera. So these are services or information that span across your organization. It's not just IT services. It's about getting access to anything that I need across the organization. I can make a request. Uh, we can see here that you can have things like uh, within your organization, you can promote different programs. So you have content managed banners, et cetera, uh, cloud services, et cetera. So let me go into one of these services. We'll go into the, let's go into Office 365. So here you can see it's a very kind of rich experience, similar to what you'd get by going shopping on Amazon, et cetera. I can uh, create a profile with images, videos, so you can really kind of engage your employees when you're helping them. You can see the description. And all of this is content managed. <clears throat> so I have the ability to add this to a cart. So if, I'm, if I need multiple items, I don't need to make multiple requests. I can do it all at once. Uh, or I can request now. I can do things like request for others if I'm a manager, et cetera. Let's take a look at this on, uh, the, web, on the web interface now. So we'll go to the web interface. <clears throat> and we'll look at a couple more things. So one thing to note here is that 
when I create a service, I'll go back into the um, uh, Office 365. This service is created in the catalog once. I don't need to create a service for mobile and one for desktop and one for other form factors. Everything here is built responsively. So uh, you create one service and it works across all form factors. Let's go back to the catalog and look at a couple other things. One is bundles. So we'll go to this uh, bundle. We have this concept of bundles. So if you are providing a service like onboarding a new employee, for example, it's not just one thing that that employee needs. The employee needs more than a new laptop. So you can create these bundles, a collection of services or capabilities that you can request at once. So in this case, the employee is going to get a new computer, an employee badge, um, and then some optional items. Like maybe they get a phone, maybe you set up the workspace. I can decide to turn on or off. So if I'm a manager onboarding a new employee, I can do everything within this one single request and it's going to fire off all of these actions. And the workflows can be fired off as one single workflow, or you can create individual workflows so that these can all be fired off uh, in, in parallel and all be provisioned at different rates, et cetera. So bundles is a key aspect here, not only for those that are going in and making requests, but for those that are setting up logical steps, something like onboarding a new employee, and you can, be, you can create a very comprehensive type of survey. The other I'll go into quickly is my stuff. <clears throat> so within my stuff, I can go in, and this one doesn't have as many, but I can go and see my things, my assets, my phones, my computers, etc. And it's a contextual point in which I can make requests. So I can go in here and make a request for headphones without having to go and specify what my phone is because the system knows about it. But let's take a look at our chatbot now. So our chatbot is the omni-channel experience to this. Uh, it works seamlessly with Digital Workplace. And I'm going to use my chatbot now to actually make a request. So I'm going to say uh, I need some new software. And again, I'm using Slack here. This is one of the channels that you saw today, but we're gonna go through a different scenario. And this is gonna be an end-to-end -end scenario that I'm gonna show you. So again, the chatbot can understand what I'm saying, what, what, um, what my question or, or need is. I'll say that I'm working on, uh, actually I'm going to, I uh, need a better text editor. So what I'm going to do here actually is deploy some software. And I'm showing an end-to-end -end use case. So I'm going to say uh, Notepad++. Plus plus. Oops. And I'm going to say I want it on this exchange machine. And I'm going to say confirm that yes, this is correct. So what this is going to do is it's going to submit the request. It submitted a request into Digital Workplace. So if I go back into my Digital Workplace and go to my activity, I'm going to see this request has been made. So I didn't do it through a form, but you can see here that I made it. Now, what I've, what I've done here is you can see I have 20 current programs installed. This, by the way, is the Exchange server that I specified when I was going through that process. I'm going to refresh it in a second. It takes a, couple, it takes a minute or so, but what we have set up here is this service within Digital Workplace has a workflow and one of the steps in the workflow is to collect information from the service, connect with our BMC client management solution and deploy the software, deploy the software that I requested to the place that I requested it at. So uh, let me refresh here and see if it's available. Sometimes takes a few seconds or a few minutes but it's now in the process of actually deploying the software. <clears throat> so while we wait, let's try something else here. I'm going, to, um, I'm going to show another channel. So I'm going to talk, to talk to my phone here and say, text BMC Helix chatbot. I need Wi-Fi access for a guest. Yes. Okay, it's sent. So 
can see here that now the chatbot has responded and it's asking me the name of the guest. So I'm using the same chatbot, a different channel here. Dave Smith. How many accounts do I need? Just one. Today. Friday. So I can use different forms of dates. Here, instead of buttons, because I don't have buttons in a text message, I can type yes, or I can use the enumerated list, so it formats it based on the device that I'm using. And you can see here that I've created a request. I have the ability to rate this as well. When I go back into Digital Workplace, we're going to see, again, when I refresh my activity, we're going to see that request made again. So I did it through first through Slack, and then now through a text message. And they all come into the same spot. They're all leveraging Digital Workplace, the workflows. So you can see here that I've requested guest Wi-Fi. Let's go back to our machine here. I'm going to click Refresh. And you can see now we have 21 programs installed and Notepad++ was installed. So it's just a very quick example of how I can use something like the conversational interface that I use to interact with my coworkers. And when this is integrated into uh, workflow and automation, I can actually get the, the software that I requested in an automated way right away. And that's the expectation that people have when they use things like chatbots or virtual assistants. The automation takes place and I get things right away without having to wait for humans to intervene. So we have a few minutes here. Let me go through a couple more use cases. So we'll go through our web interface. I'm gonna click on the chat window on Digital Workplace. This is an example of our web interface. Uh, which is customizable to your organization, but I'm just going to type hi. <clears throat> and here I've programmed the chatbot to do this, provide information. It says, I know, uh, I know a bunch about you and this information. You wouldn't do this in the real world, but it shows that we have context of who the user is, what devices they have, what stuff, etc. This helps you personalize your experience to your end users. It also means that you can give context uh, take context and give it back w within your answers. So if the answer is different, if the person lives in India versus North America, then uh, you can provide that context. And maybe most importantly, it uses it to make sure it's giving the right information that you're entitled to. So it's not going to request a service that you don't have an entitlement to. It's not going to return you knowledge that you don't have an entitlement to. Here I'll ask the chatbot, how do I back up uh, Windows 10, and we'll take a look at an example of providing knowledge. So here, chatbot can provide knowledge. This is through our cognitive search, which allows us to search multiple data sets. It's enriched with natural language. Uh, we can search data from, that's federated or unfederated, both structured and unstructured, so we can take advantage of more data within our organization. I can go in, view the article, scroll through the, all of the articles that Helix is recommending before I find my answer. So knowledge is a key aspect to a chatbot because it gives them, or gives your chatbot additional lines of defense. It gives more context and it means you don't have to train it specifically for more things. You can leverage your knowledge to provide information to your chatbot. <clears throat> so what happens if the chatbot can answer your questions? I'll say here, um, the user can always say transfer or let's say talk to a human. And what this is going to do is actually transfer me to a live agent. In some cases it might ask you a specific topic that can be used for routing. But here, now I'm being transferred to a live agent. So what Peter showed previously, I can actually go into uh, Smart IT. Let's refresh this. <clears throat> I'm logged into this system here, Smart IT as an agent. I'll refresh it. I'll go to live chat. 
and I can see this chat here. So I'm talking to a chatbot, I'm now getting transferred over to a live agent. So I'll click on this, and I can see information, I can accept the chat, type whatever I want to the, to the user, I see the context of the chat, and the user is, uh, gets the response back. Let me go here. Might be just a, a data latency issue. <clears throat> so user should get the response. I'm sure it's on its way, it's just a network issue. So it gives you the ability to have that conversation with a chatbot and a live agent all within the same window. Now if I have, I can also interact with other chatbots, so I can say here, uh, let's re just refresh this one. I can ask the chatbot about an HR issue, so I'll say uh, I want a visa letter. If I need to um, go traveling, I need a letter. Here the chatbot in this case knows about other chatbots that can help me. So it's redirecting me to another chatbot that can help. Uh, we're actually working on a, on a more seamless transfer between the chatbots, but uh, here the chatbot has recommended that I talk to the HR letter and I, or HR chatbot and I can go on with this conversation. Now, what happens when the chatbot doesn't know how to resolve an issue, but you want it to, so we wanted to train it. So I'll say here, for example, I want to give a spot bonus. And the chatbot here doesn't have knowledge and it hasn't been trained for this issue. But we know within our digital workplace catalog, we have a service and a way to actually request, get this request to the right people to approve. So let's train our chatbot with our service catalog. We'll go to the Helix Launchpad. I'll go to the digital workplace catalog. <clears throat> and I'll find this service for spot bonus. So I'll search on uh, spot. So we have this service here. And we can go, we can go see that we have, if I go into the workflow, we can see we, we have a number of questions that's been defined in this service, etc. Let's use this to actually train our chatbot. So I will go to uh, the published version and I'm going to enable in chatbot. What this is gonna do is take this data and allow us to pre-train our chatbot with this data. So I'm gonna say I want this in our HR chatbot. I'm gonna train this service. I can add in different ways to ask. So I can say here, uh, want to give a spot bonus, which is an example that I just used, but I wouldn't need to because it's trained. And then I can use this to just quickly train. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna take these questions and ask the chatbot to ask all these questions. Here I'm just saying to, to show buttons instead of uh, text. Uh, I'm going to leave that and then in the summary I'm going to say I don't want it. So let's go and quickly publish this. What this is doing now is taking all of this conversation that's being built in the back end, it's building a data model for this new use case and it's actually publishing it through our cognitive microservice to our AI layer. So it usually takes a minute or so but what's going to happen is the response from the chatbot is going to be automatically different than I'm sorry, I can't help you, or I don't have any information on that. So let's give it a shot. This is always the tricky part to see if the, te if it's the training's been done. We'll go to our HR chatbot, and let's say this again. I want to give a spot bonus. <clears throat> so it hasn't quite been trained yet. So you can see here that it's now been trained. So it took about two minutes to train it. And instead of saying I couldn't find anything related, it's now going through the questions in the catalog and it's gonna help me. So what's the full name? I'm gonna say Simon, cause he did a great job. And we can say uh, Cash. This also respects your conditional questions. This question here, for example, 
would not be asked if I had selected the other point. So it builds in conditionality into your conversation. I'm going to say great job. And then it also builds the configuration. So it builds the integration into the catalog specifically for that service. I can see here the request has been made. I can look at the details of the request and I can rate the experience as well. So this is a way in which we're leveraging the data and the structure that you have within your catalog already to, to help you train your chatbot to be as, as efficient as possible right out of the gate so you don't have to build all these use cases twice. So just a couple more minutes left. I'm going to show uh, an innovation that we've done recently. So we are continually adding innovation to our products. So for example, we're adding uh, tone analysis in our next release, uh, proactiveness so chatbot can reach out to you, um, RPA being able to uh, leverage our chatbot with RPA vendors like Automation Anywhere to be able to actually run bots on the back end. And then another one that we've done recently is integrated into what we call cognitive single sign-on. And it's about leveraging both facial and voice recognition to authenticate a user. And we've done so with a partner of ours, Veritone. So let's take a look at how that looks. I'm gonna refresh this page so I can log in as the right user. And the objective here is to allow you an additional form of authentication. So in the case, for example, that a user wants to reset their password, you wanna make sure that that user is who they are. So here I'll do, we built out a, uh, a use case here where I'll just tell the chatbot that I wanna reset my password. And the chatbot here is gonna say, have you trouble logging in? Do you wanna use cognitive single sign-on? I'll say yes and we'll click to authenticate. Now this is gonna use both my face and my voice to identify me. So I'll click on, uh, on the authenticate. We can see here that uh, my face is in here. It'll confirm. I can drink coffee every day. It identifies my voice and has successfully authenticated me. So you can see here now that it's taking me to the next step and asked me what account do I want to authenticate. So it's a good way to use these advanced technologies to be able to do additional authentication and that's something that we're, we're working with our partner on. And that's it for me. I mean, what? oh yeah, last slide. So go here. And just the uh, just just the last thing, kind of the money slide here, just stating once again we were uh, ranked the number one digital workplace offering in the space. On that note, thank you for everything. Thanks for coming around. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.